In Alabama, you can be convicted of DUI for driving under the influence of marijuana or weed. Now, to do this, the prosecution has to establish three elements. So, what are they? The first thing is they have to prove that you're driving or in actual physical control of the vehicle. Usually that's fairly easy. Some guys, you know, driving along and they get pulled over by the cop. Pretty easy to show that they're driving. Although, when they have an actual physical control case, sometimes that's a little bit harder. Guys by the side of the road. He's just listening to the radio. Is he in actual physical control of the vehicle? It's a decision that would be made by the fact finder. Under those circumstances, they probably would say, oh, well, you're in actual physical control of the vehicle. What about these key fobs that you now have where you can keep it in your pocket and start the car? If somebody's sitting there, they got the key fob, but the car's not running. Are they in actual physical control? So these are the kinds of issues that would the prosecution would have to establish beyond a reasonable doubt. The jury would have to say, yeah, this person is in actual physical control of the vehicle. So that's step one is, were they actually driving or were they in actual physical control of the vehicle? Part two, they have to show that the person was under the influence of marijuana. And they want to show that that was more than just under the influence, but under the influence to the extent they couldn't safely operate that motor vehicle. So how? How do they do this? Well, there's a number of ways that it can be done. You know, sometimes a person who gets stopped by the cops isn't that smart, and they just say, Oh, oh I was just smoking some pretty good weed, officer. Pretty easy. That's probably enough to show that they were under the influence of marijuana. You know, a cop walks up and the guy's going, bad boys, bad boys, what you gonna do with it when they're smoking for you? Again, that's kind of an, an easier way. But that's not the only way. I mean, it doesn't, it can be that there's, you know, a joint hanging out of their mouth, joints in the ashtray, clouds of smoke, all of those things. But they can also do it by what we call blood, breath, or urine tests. Now, in Alabama, they can take a blood test to determine, well, is there THC, that is the active ingredient, you know, the marijuana, is it in their system? Uh, they can do it with a urine test. There is such a thing as a weed breathalyzer. In other words, a machine that you, and it tells whether you're high. It's not yet in use in Alabama as of this writing. I'm not sure if it's in use anywhere, but they have developed a, a weed breath analyzer. All of that said, proving that a person was driving under the influence of marijuana can be difficult for prosecutors. In other words, just because somebody was arrested for this doesn't always mean that the prosecution can prove beyond a reasonable doubt that the person was driving under the influence of marijuana to the extent they couldn't safely operate a motor, operate a motor vehicle. Uh, and if that can't be done, the person's going to be acquitted, they get to take a walk. The third element required for conviction in this kind of prosecution is to prove that that person was impaired by the marijuana to the extent, as I said, that they can't safely operate the motor vehicle. Well, how do you do that? An officer may testify that, oh, this person displayed difficulty in their driving, they were driving poorly or they had bad coordination, something of that uh, effect. They might bring in an officer who's trained in what's called DRE, which is drug recognition uh, expert, and he'll look at things and say, oh, gee, their eyes were jerking. That's called nystagmus, and that shows that he was high. Whether or not that will be effective depends on how good a job the officer does and what his qualifications are, as well as how good your lawyer is and what's his ability to uh, shake or challenge the credibility or reliability of that testimony. Now, whether or not your lawyer is effective, of course, depends on his skill. But Alabama doesn't have a specific legal guideline as to, well, what's too much weed? When we're talking about alcohol, we have a, a rule. If it's over 0.08% of alcohol in your blood, so the argument is, well, you're over the legal limit. But Alabama doesn't have a specific legal limit of how much THC in your blood is too much. So, well, what is it? It's, it's a jury question is what it is. Um, what do you do? You 
find yourself in a legal jam, whether it's uh, driving under the influence of marijuana or anything else, you want to get the best lawyer you can. Of course, if you're in a jam, and we hope you're not, but if you are and you want our help, just give us a call here at Siegel & Siegel. Our number's below. Thanks for watching.